PC Cortina City on my one hour express heater box restoration section of the Papa video. We talked about that plenum area under the skull to stop fumes getting into your car and to make fresh air flow much more purely not mixing with engine fumes which you get if you don't replace these seals here. Now we've gone into stores and dragged out another heater box. It looked rough but we've managed to do a one hour express express restoration on it. Now people are asking why didn't you use Papa's one? I've mentioned it so many times it hasn't got the hot air diverter flap built in because it was for export. Papa was for South America, was built to go to South America. So on the production line at the factory, they would have picked a Delon Air hot climate unit, which is basically exactly the same, but it just doesn't have the, the flap inside to divert hot air through the heater matrix. So rather than take Papa's apart, it seemed a shame because these do crumble when you try and take them to bits. They just fall to pieces. I found one in store, so I was lucky. So what I've done, I'll give it a quick one hour refurb. I've gone over it with thinners, so just gun thinners and a brush to get the uh, the crud off it, because it's gentle with a brush, you can't really do anything else. Then air gummed it down with the uh, compressed air so that these spaces here that I'm about to attach the self-adhesive strip to, the foam strip, are grime free and this will adhere much better. It's got little guide channels for this to go in. This is just this is actually Dynamat type stuff, but it works the cell. It's closed cell, it works the same. It's closed cell. So it won't deteriorate with water, hopefully. Put an angle on that one. That goes in there like this. That completes the circuit. So now what we've got is a, a sponge backing pad all the way around the back of the heater. And you can see this hole here is where the, the cold air is drawn in to the squirrel cage fan. Here is the skull, there's the skull intake and that's that plenum we've just been looking at. So that's how you replace the seal there. You cut, you can buy this on the sheet or you can buy it in strips, but this stuff is actually what I got from, um, I got this from Martrim, M-A-R-T-R-I-M and it's actually a soundproofing material, but it works as a sponge as well. Now the sun, we just took the heater box out of Papa and it is a hot climate only heater box and I didn't want to take it apart to install what's called the blender valve or blender flap inside it. That creates the diversion of air through the matrix which you then have to install if you want to make it hot. It's missing and you've got to take the heater box apart to do that and they're very difficult to take apart. They break the fiberglass breaks down and it, they, they can be done but it, it doesn't warrant the hours it's going to take. So I've got one that's already in stock. It was a bit grubby and a bit faded but I've tarted it up. I've smartened it up. This one is a UK spec one which has the heater flap and here it is the, the blend, heat blender flap. You can hear it there and it's just inside. I'm going to be very careful how I do this. You'll see it there moving across what happens is when it's in the halfway position as cold air manages to get through this divert chamber here when it goes all the way to hot all the air is forced through the matrix which is installed there so by going halfway it allows it cold air to escape this way and half the hot air to go that way if it's halfway if it's fully cold or off you'll get some cold air coming out so this is the output for the feet, for your feet, and for the screen. Just for the vent, it has a dedicated port, which isn't connected with this area of flow. It's always forced down, so you've always got cold air coming out of that flat, uh, that output there, no matter what that flap's doing. So you've got permanently cold air, you shut it off on the face vents themselves. Centrifugal fan then, squirrel cage type, goes in here. Draws the cold air for the whole operation through this input. You can see that foam pad I've fitted on there now. I've cut that in strips. That's actually sound dead and material, but it works well for this. I got it from Martyrum. Cut it in strips. I've put thinners down on a brush 
and completely degrease this and it's, it's bone dry and that helps the self adhesive um, foam pad to stick really well in fact you, it, you can't get it off it's pretty toughly on okay so that makes that airtight seal which you need on that plenum area below the skull it stops engine fumes getting in they'd creep in around the back if you didn't do this so when we install that we're good to go I've also put some reinforcing plates on the inside of the heater box and then I've riveted them on in the original rivet points that have the heater hose support brackets they're missing off this and excuse me they're missing off this and that's because I've used them on other cut projects I'll probably use this as a donor uh, thing but it's been saved and it wrapped up in the workshop for a reason and it's a pretty good heater box actually it's not too crumbly this one so this one's ready to go now the, the reinforcer plates there because quite often these hose uh, clip supports just rip out so when I come to install the new ones I want it to have the backing plate in so the rivets so it doesn't tear out I've glued them in from the back with silicon okay and then riveted it in so if I drill both those rivets now once the silicon is cured the plate would stay in place ready to take the bracket and the new set of rivets or you could rivet one at a time and take it easy but that's future proofing it with some support brackets you could actually add them on your car if you want to by taking the matrix out you get your hand in there so that's a one hour quick refurb thinners some satin black new foam and um, just cleaned off the crud off the flap so it was all covered in crusty foam i'm not going to re-foam the, the flap i'm not sure really why they do it it's probably to stop that metallic noise but i found that putting the foam on unless you get exactly the right type has tendency to peel off so it really needs if it's going to be done it's got to be done with some real serious foam or glue and um, i found it a better air seal without it it actually isn't strong enough to actually compress the foam and make a proper airtight seal you actually get a better seal by having it clean it's a bit more rattly but you only hear that once uh, one operation so that's done i can take it back to the car Let's go and get this in and get the matrix in fitted and we're all good to go there that's quite nice for just a quick one hour this goes to show you can still get these they're still out there let's go and fit it. it's all done and ready to go Just cutting the strip like this. I forgot to do the other side. It's easier to do it on the heater box than it is in the bay. Always work on a blanket with these heater boxes and very, very careful because they will just disintegrate. There's no way around it, that's what happens. So this pad now on here, you could mitre these if you really want to be really on it, you could mitre those. This one requires a little bit of a, a separate cut. Just to get that back section in. You will see a little bit of this from the bay. As opposed to the factory seal, it looks a little bit different. I'm hoping that the thickness of this isn't too thick to stop it from installing it in the car now that can happen this is a little bit on the, the thicker side uh, of the seal so and especially with it being a fiberglass box especially with it being a fiberglass box you've got more chance of it breaking see the thing is this doesn't really take that much longer to do and for something as important as the heater I'm talking about the comforts now even though it's a runaround car you still want it to be comfortable and if you can do it for not a lot of extra money and not too much time surely it's worth getting this right and any job is worth doing right even if it's for a rat look that doesn't mean to say it shouldn't be a reliable rat look and indeed reliability is what you need because you don't want to be breaking down simple as that so that's gone all the way round I'll just bring it up to the screen for you viewers at home that's that one I think that's the right shape this one here for the cold air simply just needs to be a circle there's no need to have that tab seal that they have from the factory 
Now that'll be a bit harder. This stuff does go and it should work with it being clean. We'll give it a try to see if this will follow a curve. It might need serrations in it from the blade to assist the radius. I don't know. Or to assist it making a shape because of the tight radius. I don't know, it might, it might go. Could this stuff be better than we think? It is sticking good, that's for sure. I'll do an overcut on this now. So that they get an exact circle. I don't know if you can see my knee in the way. I'm working a little bit under pressure today. Making sure the camera... Yeah, that's about where you want to be on your screen. I'm going to do an overcut on both. that good you can't peel it off and then that's the overcut that is it doesn't appear to need any cuts in it I'd be surprised if that could stay together really because it's lost its join you know it's continuous but that's gonna work so that's two seals done at the bottom look that's really what you need on these if you can get away with it now you've got to fit them in the car and it's got to slightly crush that seal up that one coming away there that's all right though once you get it in it's in i'm not saying this is the only stuff it's just what i'm using today and it will work once it compresses it i promise you that um, I'm going to use a soldering iron to cut out the eyelet holes because it is hard to cut the foam. If you get a red hot soldering iron, you can burn through your eyelet holes for the bolts to go through. So you don't have to tighten because you can't really drill this. If you cut it, you lose the the air seal. But if you put a red hot soldering iron through the eyelets, you can make a nice a nice factory job. Right, let's go over to the car. See you in a sec. Stop. Okay, this is the final piece to put the sealing on, on the sealing strips on. That's the final closing piece you can see that there it's going to be really airtight and they are designed to take the strip so if you've not got the strips you most likely won't have your car will not be sealing correctly so that's the heater box in and you can see the seal there still plenty of room and that's with the bracket fully tightened so you can see it's quite a thick seal that the factory must have used and you see that so much fumes and air would get in that if that's not done proper. So much fumes and air would get in. And that's the way to do it. So you get a nice cabin smell as well. Because it's just the smell of your air freshener and nothing else. So the heater box is in. Some tips on the heater box. They have a collar in this or shoulder in that fixing point at the top and that one. And when you fit a new seal to your heater box, I always change these bolts for slightly longer ones i think these are m8s you see that it's not quite enough when you put the new seal on for it to grab the captive nut and also always make sure you lubricate these nuts those bulkhead closed uh, captive nuts are very bad for rusting and very bad for spinning out freely very careful if you're gonna if you're undoing your heater box make sure you've worked them a week before but when you say you've worked them, make sure you have and not just spray them because that's not necessarily going to get it. You've got to make sure that the spray that you put on there, be it Bulldog or Furtan or WD, has actually got to the thread and the bolt. Otherwise, you're just kidding yourself. Otherwise, you snap them. But the trick with them is wind out, wind in again, wind out, wind back in. If you're finding them, you feel like they're, they're resisting you. These are the ones I mean. One two you've got to make sure now they've got the shoulder in sometimes the shoulder will come out with the heater box sometimes it'll come out with the bolt but you need the shoulder because it's the standoff for the seal the reason they have that is that it assumes that seal is on and allows it otherwise you'd be trying to completely compress the heater box against the bulkhead and the seal and it would crack the heater box in fact i've done it myself forgetting to put the shoulders in and then you crack that corner Okay, so you've got to be so careful. There's only one chance to get this. Bottom ones aren't as bad. They'll leave her up. That one's ready to uh, to nip up now. The others have took the tension. I didn't. You just you go a bit at a time. Take it easy. Go round 
a little bit at a time this one if you if you're struggling to get that one because of your engine you can get one of these you may as well buy one anyway and you can get in with that here that gets that one out makes life very easy again you might have to work that one as well it might be rusted in and hope hopefully you'll be all right now with this i talked about the soldering iron we've got to plug it in and burn the holes in it i'll show you that in a sec let that heat up see how we've cut that there and how important it is to have that one to have all of these continuous wiper motors on by the way wiper motors running i'll show you that in a sec bulkhead was all cleaned back i think i missed filming i've got a still shot i think i got it i wire wheeled all the crud off then we we spray painted it in it's been zinced zinced as well and to finally wax oil it because that corner's already been done remember on earlier films i drilled an inspection hole in the corner of the scuttle here look and that got wax oil blasted all the way up to that point which is the most vulnerable bit then there's a closing panel here you can't get to it then it becomes this section and that section is um, accessible by pointing the lance through the scuttle when the closing panels are on I thought it'd be better to do it that way it'll create less mess so we'll hit that later on and that can be done periodically always do it when the car's bone dry as well if you're going to do that in fact another tip for you if, you if you're really stuck for time you're stuck for money you're stuck for or you're worried about the car uh, that it might have rust in here you can as a get out of jail if you've got a decent lance go in this way it means taking nothing off then but get a lance or make your own that you can put in then twist and rotate round under high pressure and blast the hell out of it with anything that you want old engine oil if you have to anything but only do it when it's dry no point doing it when this is damp so it will need to have been a dry summer's day for maybe three or four days of the car with no rain on it or borrow someone's heated garage and let it cook for a week i don't know but get the lance in and it's important to rotate it and that way you'll get it without having to take these panels off all right it's just another little tip something i'll do when i top up the cars so heater box looks good and of course as we said this one has now got the diverter flap in fact you can see the diverter flap now a bit clearer and how it works let's get this come on come up with me and then if we go in here it is i'm gonna actually spray a little bit of oil on that pivot point i don't like the way they make that squeaky noise there it is one diverter flap and you can see how it opens up the hole there for the fresh air to go in there's the seal seal in fact only just compressing of course just about compressing it is more at the front compressed than it is at the back but so uh, yeah very close call on those seals can you see that only just even with that thickness gets it looks a lot better than not having one i'm just checking to make sure that it's I think what's happened actually is rather than it not getting it's just it's compressed it inwards a bit so that's a good seal it's just drawn it in a bit that's all that's happened there so you've got to get that seal just right that one um and then yeah say the flap it's just there there you go it's a better view so that goes across the matrix fits in there of course that slot there so the air would go through it if that flap was open and off you go you can fit the matrix now we're done with that okay so we're going good I've got what have I got to do next tighten that one up there's the plenum tube connector so this one would take a plenum tube it slots onto there and then pushes toward the back you can see I've painted this I wire, will, I wire brush that back it's had zinc on it rust killer on it and then just a quick colour match paint over we're not trying to make it 
anything crazy it just blends it in a bit better just weathers it in a little bit better we're just trying to do damage limitation really soldering iron that was it that'll be hot now so we are here like this burning through to make nice clean holes it feels like autumn today you know it's it's awful the weather it just feels terrible and uh, where are we here there there two at this end one at the end that's it that's how you do them One right in that corner, that's one in the corner. It just makes it easier. Right, I can fit the closing panel now and we're done. I'll see you in a sec. Closing panel going on, last of the panels. Then we put the matrix in. Okay, always give them a spray. Spray liberally before you put them in. Closing panel seals there against there. I think, yeah, this does go in last because sometimes you get it the wrong way around and you don't know which one goes in last, which one goes in first. But it is this one in last because it's shaped to fit. This will be a nice compression. This one now, this really will compress. Get that to start that's the earth as well for the part of the circuit for the wiper don't forget your earth tab for the wiper motor so this has to be squashed a bit more simply because we've got fresh sealant a uh, fresh sealing on it the rest of the bolts then already treated here in a little dish which was soaking in the fur turn that one popping out so we can't quite get the compression hopefully I'm not in your way so that's what I mean about that longer bolt we might just get that one this is just because the seals thicker than it would be I suppose we're in we're in we just need that one's got an adjustment, a certain amount of adjustment on it. These ones need to go in now. Very crushed here. Okay, now we'll go for the full time. This way, in a wave. Feeling it as well. I don't want to strip them, this could strip them. Back, we've got one more to go here. Takes that one up, that's it. We're on. That's a nice job. That is a nice job. I'll take you off, then you can come in. That is a nice airtight plenum. Exactly what we wanted it to do. That's how it should be done. And that didn't cost anything really just some sealant strip and a bit of thought that's how this should be put back right tomorrow we'll get the engine going I'll go and get a fan belt and we'll get the engine going I don't like that fat fan belt there alliteration for the day clutches on accelerators on oh yeah the heater hose oh also forgot to say while we're on this the heater mate it always has a rubber a sponge pad at the back to cushion it so it looks a bit crude so it goes over the top and round like a u-shape uh, that silver stuff i've got probably too thick to do it um let's have a look oh no it will do it it'll go top bottom top middle of bottom top middle of bottom it'll go right i'll do that now and then i'll close it up so i'm just going to put foam in a u-shape round there it stops it rattling it's just the way the factory did it that is a factory job it's a high capacity heater as well, one of the best ones I've seen. I think my, some of my cars have got them. 
nice those right I don't think I'll film the foam on that what I'll do as well I'll refurb the blower motor well I say refurb it I'll clean the blades down then I'll just three in one oil the bushes they have um, brass bushings on they're not the best motors in the world they are a cheap cheapskate motor not much torque in them the RPM on them is not very quick they're not bad for what they are but they're a noisy unit they're a very droney motor on those on Cortinas and uh, I've upgraded mine with some um, Toyota Yaris ones although it's a bit of bit of a uh, fettling to do you've to you have to sort of get a plastic if you've got a fiberglass housing you need to upgrade the lid the fan uh, lid the fan housing lid to plastic and then you route out the plastic using a combination of Dremel RV silicon and you drop a Yaris motor in you have to upgrade your cables though you've got to do a dedicated high power feed to the motor you can't use the, the Cortina's engine bay loom to power it if you're doing a Yaris motor upgrade it won't work it'll melt your loom no good if it doesn't melt your loom it'll just make the plug hot and it won't run it'll run a slightly bit better but not as good you have to run it through a fuse through a relay to the battery and then the relay comes on when you when your fans on um, you lose the slow and fast speed if you just do it straight off the fan output because a relay will switch on a low setting on the fan switch and it'll also switch on the high setting in other words a low setting will not not turn off the relay the relay will come on even on the slow setting so you you if you had your yaris motor in here as soon as you hit slow on the blower the relay will come on because it does uh, work off um, a rear stat principle as opposed to voltage operated in other words low setting is still 12 volts it's just 12 volts at a lot lower current well the relay doesn't need much current so it doesn't kick it in I found this out when I've been designing these switches so I had to make a mine to get fast and slow I've done it on Tina G's got it I can't remember what I did for Tina G's fast and slow wiring loom mod I'll show you what I mean because some people might be interested in this I'll go off topic just for a sec uh, there's no point explaining it. Someone, you know, there the, not many people out there is going to do this, but there may be some. Uh, what did I do to get the speeds? Oh, uh, oh my God. No, I still can't remember. Oh my God, I did it. There's the upgraded loom. That wire looks like a Cortina plug, but it's not. The plug is a dummy. The plug is two halves of a plug hollowed out with the wire passing straight through it. There's no join there. Even though it looks like a join, it isn't a join. You can't have a join because it gets too hot. So then you can see the original blower motor wire is feeding a little miniature loom that I've built, which goes down to some relays, which are down at the front behind the headlamps. But, unfortunately, I cannot remember how I got it to do two speed. There was a way. There was a way of doing it. Oh, God, I'm, that's really going to do my head in now. Oh, well. I shall... The point is, the main thing is the motor does go in. It's just You can build the speed control how you want, but there was a way that I did it. I've totally forgot. I have to go down there and have a look later. I'll do my head in. Right, foam for the rad, foam for the rad for the Matrix. See you. That's the foam on. In we go. Nice. And then this plate goes in. And that is that. They should fit, they can be tight. I'll just check in then the holes were there for the scrub screws to go in. This is where you can damage the box. It can break the ears. I've seen it so many times and I've done it so many times. That is in the best I can get now. There we go. Should have put a little bit of lube on there really. 
just the right thickness that stuff to be fair that's just lining up with the with the grub screw holes here I wish there was a better way for those not to break but they do break so often so that's that we're good to go big day petrol going in I think I've got everything in the engine bay hooked up now folks so nothing to stop us filling the tank get the air uh, 15 litres of the amber nectar in there come on you know you can hell yeah tank getting filled gauges and power are on we should get a fuel gauge reading I hope I've cleaned the fuel gauge connector and plugged it back on but um, it is a bit of a and unknown that fuel sender I fitted as a second hand one. We'll have to just see. Temperature gauge works. I've shorted it to ground just to make sure it deflects and it does. That's on the engine block. I'll show you in a sec. Not put any water in it, but we're only going to just get it to just fire initially. I've got to get the petrol through first. It'd be nice if my 12 volt pump had siphoned this through, but it won't. So I'm going to just hope the pump on the engine block works. We don't know that either. That's 10 litres. I don't know how much to put in it really. Really should start with 10. I might just start with 10 and see where the gauge is. I brought 15 just in case. get with 10. I've got a feeling that's going to be just about in the reserve so let's take you over to the dash. We might not get any movement at all. I think we have got movement. I think we have got movement there. Got alternator light on, I've soldered the alternator plug on. I'll bring you in. Get you off the stand, keep you running. Hmm, no, I don't think the fuel gauge is moving. I think it might be knackered, that fuel gauge. Or there might be a bad connector on the tank plug, but something's not right. They're notorious. I did squeeze the plugs and make sure it was on. They're notorious, but there's no movement on that. Don't think anyway. Oil pressure light goes out. That's a good sign. Good oil pressure's coming off straight away there. I've got a long way to go to get that fuel through. I'm just annoyed about the gauge. Should because normally, even when it's empty, it'll, it'll come up on the thing a bit. I'll have a little quick look at the plug now, be right back. But we've got to get this fuel through first. Let's check in the fuel gauge, and I've basically shorted the circuit out at the sender. So you'd expect a short on the input, in other words, a ground to the sender wire should give a ground to this, which would give you full movement, but there's no ground. So I thought it might have been a bad pin here, so I've just, I've just spliced in, cut in. This wire should be short to ground because I'm grounding at the sender, so that should be ground. Ground at the sender should be ground here. There isn't anything, which the only explanation is there's a break in the cable. There's no other explanation because you're grounded there on the plug. I've shortened the plug together, tested the ground connection, it's right. So somewhere between that and the dash is a break and indeed lift the seat and what do you get? But it's squashed so most likely this seat is dug into the cable there look and I bet you it's broke it here. So when I, when I do a fault finding like this establish that you've got connection with earth at the back get your connector off at the front and check for an earth. In other words, what I'm saying is the wire is open to the sender, but we've grounded it out, we've fooled it, we've shorted it to earth. So the input to the dash cluster, which goes to the gauge, should be shorted to earth. It's not. 
so there's a break in the cable indeed if you put a continuity tester pin if your leads were long enough you'd put it on that pin and you'd put it on the sender and it would be zero ohms because there's a break in the cable and the break in the cable is going to be here and when you do do it I usually go for halfway first so I'd have, I'd have gone for here broke in here and seen where the short was and if it's earthed up to that point then it must be further up the line or further back down the line but as I lifted the seat to do it I spotted this so that saved me some time most faults are observation that it's highly likely it's that I can see the wire there actually it's blue and black and indeed that is blue and black Done. it doesn't look snapped but it's probably crushed let's have a look we'll have to split it up I shouldn't be doing this because I'm trying to get the engine going but I want that fuel gauge working it's just one of them OCD things I'm going to cut into that loom now okay looking at that connector here at the back it's actually crushed but not not split the cables so I've just opened the splice up on that and that is earthed so it's okay at that point so I'll just tape that back up we'll wrap that back up that's okay it looked like it was that so then i'm going to go further forward so go to the next point and we're just going to inspect the cable there's something there's a break in it somewhere keep going looks all right doesn't it spin it round. and what's pete done he's angled ground through the lead look so it's my fault look what we've done and that's why the fuel gauge isn't working so I'll just solder that back up and we're, we're good. That'll satisfy my curiosity and uh, I'm pleased I've done a good fault finding job. Solder that back together with some heat shrink and that's a, a fault diagnosis. When we were at tech school they used to do stuff like this to us. It was on um, pinball games. They'd cut a wire in the harness, tape a harness back up. Horrible thing to do to us. But to be fair to the uh, tutors, they'd put the brakes in places where you'd get wear. So they wouldn't do it on a straight run unless it was a cable that was under that, that could possibly be stretched and then they would do it so they used to hide hide stuff but what you used to do is go uh halfway then halfway between halfway and keep going and then you break it down that way it's a lot quicker okay i'll solder this all back up that's what that's what the fault is we couldn't have had a non-working fuel gauge it had done my head in should get a deflection on the gauge i'll put everything back and i'll show it you working back in a sec I'd actually caught two wires there. Anyway, I've heat shrink them up. What I had to do for this is actually put an insert in it. You couldn't just join the two wires together because if you pull taut then on the loom, it's actually short and you'll put you'll re, you'll put tension on them. So we had to um, we had to you know just put a little insert in one diff two different gauges of wire. It could have been the same gauge of wire, but I put that in there. <clears throat> now I'm just going to re re uh, wrap that. I'll have to get the loom tape out later on, but we'll just get it up and running for now. Wow, it's rare you'd get this, a double fault. So now we've got the earth coming in. If you watch on my little test probe, if I go across the temperature one, you'll see a pulse light there. That's the voltage regulator pulsing the, um, the gauges. That's to stop the gauges flying all over the place it's a kind of dampening effect it's created by this little voltage regulator here which is actually a bimetallic strip inside and all it does is heat up cool down break a set of contacts creates a kind of a square wave a pulsing 12 volts so it, the gauge never gets 12 because it, 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 it the voltage turns off before the gauge gets its full power so because it's off as, as long as it's on it's half a 12 gives six in other words, it's giving 12 off, 12 off, 12 off, 12 off, and that makes the gauge soften. But we haven't got the pulse light this side. Oh, we have now. We didn't have. So these bolts are corroded as well. So we've got a double fault. And not only that, but I don't even think the earth's making it either. Because if I, if we've now got 12 pulsing on that uh, stud you'd now given that the uh, gauge has been grounded out and I have tested it that it is ground at the pin the pins not making it to the bolt so there's a break in the track there has to be a break in the track whoops there has to be a break in that track what it looks like is that the track at the top 
There is no track. Ha <laughs> ha! Double fault. Both get in and back of the net. Get in. Wow. It's a double fault. The track's bust as well. Whoa. Okay, I'll solder a link in. So that's it, because I still couldn't get the gauge to go. Okay, well, I'm waiting for the, the hot melt glue gun to uh, heat up because I'm fixing that dash. And you've just got a hot melt glue gun on the wire to the back of the board. That's one instance where it is good to use a glue gun. It's pretty safe and good to go. Well, it didn't take much cranking and fuel's hit the filter. I've only been cranking it for 20 seconds and it's got it through. So there is fuel in the line. So that's a good sign. As far as I know, everything's connected. As far as I know, I'd have to put some choke on. I've no choke. I'd have to wrap a wire around the choke. Because the choke cable's knackered. But we can choke, uh, we can lock this up for now. As far as I know, that is it. I can't think of anything else. I've got spark, I've got the plugs in, there's ignition on, so I don't know. Oh, you're joking. Did you hear that? I haven't even tried. That's just... I don't believe it. That's just... We're, we're straight in. Well, it had a go anyway. Could this, could this be it? Okay, I've got better signs of life. I've just twisted the dizzy back. It will be... It will be that. <laughs> Nearly there. Sweet little runner. I can get the radiator in now. It's got a tappy cam, all right. Okay, radiator is on because we don't want to run this for too long without water in it. But not only can I not find the watering can, the viscous fan hit the radiator. So. I didn't realise you can actually fit the original type early fans to the viscous and it just pushes, the bushing just pushes through the centre of the fan. Right, I've got the radiator in. I've put the original Cortina fan on it because the viscous one hit the rad. Mark's been here giving us a hand. And uh, air filter's on, tick over's done. It, su it runs surprisingly well and even, although the cam is knocking. It's a very noisy cam on it. So I could always take the head off if I have to and put a new cam in it and follow us. The point is we're up and running. It's very knocky, so I've had the engine had it knocking like a trooper from that cam. I've checked all the hoses, it's got up to water pressure, everything's warm. There's no leaks at, um, that I can see. The exhaust blowing a bit here. I hate those inbuilt washers that are on these later um later exhaust manifold. I don't know if they're designed to mate up with the earlier Cortina exhaust, but I could always change that, it's not a big deal. Point is we should be able to go backwards and forwards. With Mark on the camera, we are at a milestone on Project Papa, everybody. It's been a success. The last three days of graft. No choke cable. I need to get that sorted out. But I'm going to hand the camera to Mark. I'm going to run this and I'm having an early one. Well, it's not even early, but I need to have a rest. I'm exhausted. Now, we leave it with the uh, bonnet up or what? This is it. It probably won't start now. <laughs>
14 is in the way, but tyre's flat. But uh, the, clutch, the clutch is working, it's still running. The clutch is working. The bike point is actually quite good, it's just midway. I didn't think that clutch would work. I really had my doubts about the clutch because of that, the movement from the flywheel on the Kent being so further back into the bell out it means that your clutch arm or is right up at, at the last possible point. But no, we're okay. Temperature's on, nice. Fuel gauge works, although well, there's not a lot of fuel in it, but it does move. So we're good there. Alternator works as well, I couldn't believe that. That alternator repair I did. But listen to this cam. Extremely good. Tell you what, one one shot. I'll just pause it. Apart from the knocking cam, there's no oil. It's not burning anything, so just that knocking cam. No, it's not, it's not no. Well. no, it looks good. Yeah, just I'm disappointed about the exhaust. That's all brand new. That sealing ring there. Just can't seem to get it to seal on that little ring. Might have another go when it cools down. Alternator that I repaired's worked. That was a scrap alternator. The, the nut had split. So I just welded it together. Thought, well, it's scrap anyway, and it's done the job. Made up with that. Okay, before I get back on the car, I want to show you if, if we can fix a choke cable. Now, you might say you could get replacement choke cables. Well, for this pre facelift, it's quite a unique design with that side lever. I want to keep it original, so I've stripped this one down. I've had to cut and heat it up a little bit to just pull the cable out. What I did was withdrew the inner piece here and chopped the cable. And then the sheathing was glued or heat pressed into this plastic. So what I did, I heated it up with a hot air gun and it just softened the plastic. Then I pulled out the remains of the sheave. Then I've drilled out any remaining plastic that was stuck in there. And then for this end, it's crimped on. It's very hard to get the cable out of this. So what I did, I chopped it, then just crock sanded the end then cut a slit in it with a hacksaw just to loosen it and then picked out the, the remainder of the cable. My intention is to solder in a link now for this. Uh, I've got a cable from Halfords, actually Halfords actually had its use today. So I've got a new uh, brake cable from Halfords and I'm going to solder it. I'm going to cut that uh, this nib off the end and then insert the cable into there before it splays out. And hopefully I'm going to be able to solder that in and then the sheathing will should fit into there and we're gonna that's probably gonna be a bit of a loose fit so we're gonna glue that in with the Pegatanky two-part epoxy that should hold it in nice and solid the other end then is just a question of cutting it to suit where it ends up on the auto on the uh, manual choke on the carburetor itself so let's get on and 
chop this, insert it into here and hopefully solder it in and then glue the ferrule, uh, not the ferrule, the sheathing into this. Let's go. So choke cable repair. Okay, just so you can see how we've done this. There's a little ring here which you sort of prise off. That's got a little slipper on it. That just adjusts the tension so that it's not too easy to pull the lever. That's not as important. Didn't really need to take that off, but if you look at this now, we've soldered on. I'll take this out. Looks like it's worked. Hang on. So, a hacksawed a slit in it so we could get the old piece of cable out because it's crimped in. Then I soldered it with a heat gun. I used a little mini pocket heat, heat torch. I'll show you the heat torch. So I used that heat torch. Now, the solder doesn't want to take to this cable. I thought it might not. It took all right to the casing, but what, what did happen is, because it completely surrounded it in solder, I was able to crush this in the vise and it's nipped it very tight and the solder's probably helped with that. So it has worked, so we've crushed it back into shape on the on the slit that we did. So it's gripping it pretty tight. So now it can go back into there. And then this end, remember we pulled the sheave out of the end here. And then I've cut the rubber boot that came with this cable off. And this now slots into there. It's such a good fit that I think that I can just super glue that in. I actually don't think I need peg a tank yet. I think the peg a tank will just smear back out. I think this will this will work with just super glue. Because it's such a good tight fit into there. That was I just drilled that out at the end of the choke lever to get the remnants of the uh, well I pulled the sheave out but then it was kind of like scarred inside so to smooth it I just got the right size drill bit and just milled it out a little bit and that made for a much better fit this end is pretty easy we can leave it as, as it is and just cut it to suit there's no point shortening the cable we'll just uh, it should run and run through it's not much longer than the original one actually so that hot, that was this cable was from Holford's. If you get stuck, you can get in the bike, the cycle department at Holford's have got these cables in stock. Well, they did have it in my local branch. That's the boot that I cut off the end of here. You don't need that boot on; it stops it from sliding in. But it's a really good fit into here, and I'm sure these plastics will, will take to the super glue quite well. So we should be good there. And there's not a lot of force between the outer and this. And it's a very slick cable, so we should be all right. We should be working our choke now because I didn't want to carry on doing anything on the car till this was back in the game. So we'll put that slipper back on and close that slip up. That ring, that little locking ring, that goes back on there. That's just to create tension on on this shaft, so it's not slopping about. This ring slides over it here, look. And that's it, you could put a bit of WD on, a bit of 3-in-1 if you want to make it even smoother. Let's get this glued up here, and then that's it, that can go back in the car. A nice little repair, because you can't, I've been looking for these, you can't get them. I bet you when the new old stock they're expensive too. This way gets your choke cable repaired. So remember what I did, I had to cut a little slot in it with the hacksaw. I used a junior hacksaw and used it in the vise and then carefully picked out the remnants of the cable. It's hard to drill, it's tough stuff, so when you're getting your old cable out of here, just take your time. Cut that slot, open it, and pick it out. Push the old, the new cable in, solder it, and squimp it in a vise as tight as you can. You should be all right. Okay, hope you like that. I've actually decided to go for a clear epoxy there. Rather than the super glue, I just felt it was a bit better. So we've, we've put the two-part epoxy on now. I'm just waiting for that to cure. So I'm just twisting it to keep this sort of ball of glue an even shape. Otherwise it, it dribbles off. you just got to wait for it to cure. This is pretty quick. Starts moving in four minutes, this stuff. That's speed epoxy. Well worth keeping some speed epoxy in your toolkit. There it is, two bottles mixed together. Very good stuff. I recommend that one. Cortina City recommends this. It's fantastic.
Okay, that's a really good one. Pega tankies, okay, but it's, I find this easier to manage and work with. Okay, so that should cure soon. And we can get this installed in the car. Looking forward to getting this up and running, getting a nice choke setup going here for you. Choke repair, pre facelift choke repair. Join me under the bay as we fit the newly repaired choke cable. There it is in, clamps on there, and you get with the kit, with the brake cable kit from Holford's, you get a little ferrule. I'm sure that's called a ferrule, and you fer fer I can't even pronounce it. And you crimp it on the end, it stops the cable splaying. Don't go too hard. Through there, through there, through the bulkhead. I had to put a new grommet on through the bulkhead because all the rubber grommets on this car corroded and crumbled away. Not corroded, but perished. So, whoops, I've got stuck. Um, yeah, what I do, burn a hole through them with a soldering iron. It's easier than using a drill. If you get a soldering iron and melt the hole to the right size that you need, slide it over the cable, then that goes to the bulkhead again, stops fumes getting in. They're not the, exactly the same, not exactly the same grommet. Uh, the grommet has a boot on it normally, but we can't get them. Anyway, it's better than none. So I'll just show you that working. Going into the car for you. Here we go. So that's that obstacle done. A nice job, I think you'll agree. We nipped up, I think we've set it right. There we go, we're all done. That's that. What's next, everybody? Um, trying to think where we was up to last night. That's done. Definitely no. Oh, I'm going to seal the exhaust while the engine's cold. Got a fan to fit back in. And my wiper linkage blooming popped off. I'm going to have to take the bulkhead closing plate off. And I don't know what's happened there. I think it, I hadn't quite tightened the the rotating arm bolt, the 10 mil at the back. So I'll have to go and check that now. So everything else is done. I know we'll be starting it up again and then getting it into position to roll it into the, or drive it into the garage. We'll clean the garage out as well and we're ready to rock. It's time to do that uh, heater control flap we've been talking about in this series of videos. I've got a new heater motor here and the reason I've got this one is because the fiberglass heater box, the original one, the motor's bonded in. Well, it's not bonded in, but if I try and get it out, it's going to damage it. So this was in stock. It's been refurbished. So it's a bit better. Now, what I've got to do is make sure the flap is in the hot position, which is going to be across here. By the way, the matrix is leaking. We're going to need a new one. That one we tried to salvage has not worked. Right, we're in the hot position there. I've been fitting the, the lever. In fact, really, I should jam that in the hot position. Let's jam that. I'll show you the lever and stuff in a sec. I'm going to get a cloth. Stay on if you want. Been cleaning the screen as well, so so that the wipers are easy. Some glass cleaner on it. Um, put the overflow pipe on there. Routed the cables better. As I say, we did the carburetor, didn't we? The choke. Let's just jam that in there. You just stop it moving and then you've got to go under put the cables in the lever that operating lever remember very early on in the series we got onto this that's the lever that I've added pin at the back little spacer washer and I've also tightened up the ball bearing you've got a ball bearing in this lever it's sprung mounted from the back there's a little finger spring on this tongue be careful you don't lose the ball bearing but it makes it so that it clicks in positions and you might find yours has gone a bit uh, loose you can you can tune it all up there like that okay so i'm going to go underneath here now and see what we can do with that cable i've got to fit the operating mechanism that i repaired and slot it onto the shaft which is coming down from the heater box here we go okay the cable assembly is in Pete just getting his hands away from the lens there. Please don't ask me to do it again. I'm traumatised. It was tricky, I must admit. And then just setting each cable 
so that each lever is in the right position because you can lose the calibration and there's a little allen key on the arms down here see if I can show you that if you ever do it you've got to get exactly the right allen key here's the allen key it's got to be exactly the right one I don't even know what type that is it says on it it says NJ it hasn't got the number but it's perfect fit for this I'm going to show you what it's fit for look at these operating arms here okay they've got little grub screws on the shafts and you, if you loosen the grub screw and get the shaft and the lever that where you want it for the flap so it's exactly in the far extreme position when the lever's in the far extreme position and vice versa so it takes a bit of messing with to get it just right and then your little ball bearing I was telling you about it's just in that lever there and it's can you see those little mountains it's hard for me to show I can do it here there's one there's one and there's one and the ball bearing drops into each one so you get a detent is the correct word see that or hear that detent as it clicks in and the last position there they're always rubbish on the last position I've tried to get this the best I can they never the arm never quite makes it to snap the last one in I've noticed that on many of the cars but that one's about the best you're gonna get it does work so that's the, that's the motor speed and then the heater control levers there you can hear it activating sounds a bit clunky at the moment but it has all got um, lubrication in so it's working it's operating the flap in the box so we know that's right and I've checked that when I'm on cold that side it's fully closed and when I'm hot this side it's fully open for the matrix the heater matrix so that's done so we're screwing that back up now no. That was a mission that took about four hours it's amazing isn't it right there's a 13 bolt at the back you've got to do it locks the whole bracket in place and you know I'm losing tools by the barrel I just don't know where they all are you know if you lose that um, regiment of putting everything away each night you've had it and that's what's happened to me on the last two nights I've been so exhausted that I've just put the tools in one box and consequently they're not lost they're just misplaced and um, this one that would now have my mini ratchet on it and it'd be done in no time but I've lost the mini ratchet no idea where that is absolutely cannot find it yeah I had it yesterday it's not a big deal but so I'll tighten this up and then we'll give it a test. I've got that motor arm, I've got power to the car of course. We'll start the car and we should get hot air coming out. Okay, so that's that. I'll see you in a sec when we're testing. We're on and we're boiling. We are hot, hot, hot. We're tapping and knocking and we're hot, hot, hot. Temperature's holding out good. Listen to that tappy knock, that tappy valve. We'll have to get that done. Guess what blew out of the heater demist vents when uh, I switched it on? Two bits of history, two tickets. Did Andre go to go to cinema? Admit one and admit one. Some ticket stubs, folks. The rep the the money management right to refuse the holder of this funding purchase determined when can't so it's splitting off two separate tickets put them in the history file yeah they blew out of the uh, dash but yeah we're we're good to go there something else there's another ticket in there i can hear it rattling <laughs> hey ticket lottery i can hear it. it's not a i thought it was a leaf it's not a leaf door handle, I wonder where that had gone. Can we get it? Or is it my card? Could be my card. I'm 
now there's nothing else I think yeah I think I can hear it yeah there's another one in there I've obviously put them on the top and they've gone down the heater vents <laughs> well there'll be one more it'll eventually rattle its way out I guess it's not happening now Still working their way in there but we're slowly coming back to life that's the name of the game of course that repair we did there looking good these seats will need some work whoa it's red hot that's the hottest I've ever known that's burn your handy hot fuels running out we'll have to get some more temperature holds out good 97,000 yours for 4k provisional sale let's turn the heat off it's too hot wow make sure it does turn off it takes a bit to cool down but it should do go in now yep we're off there Fresh air, I need pliers to do because you've got to pull them. You've got to pull up. You've got to pull up for boost. I won't be able to do it without the knob on. I pull up for boost. Boost. Fresh air boost. Our air vents here, chucking out bits of dust and all sorts. One either side, yours for 4k. Whoa! Whoa! A lot of dust coming out of there. These are the single piece vents. Years of crud flying out as the car slowly works its way back to life, everybody. Get in there bit by bit. I've worked out the gear, it's across, up and down, for reverse. No, maybe not. I think that's it. That's the one. That's reverse. But uh, when we've got flat tyres, we're not really ready to go yet. Lovely cold air there. weird it doesn't really come much out of that side them split vents I why they did away with them it's not very good them split vents compared to sorry them single vents compared to split vents there you go we're gonna need, we're gonna need fuel I'll be right back well tomorrow's another day we'll see you tomorrow tomorrow's another day this is a rattle box, it needs a lot of work yet, but we'll get there. I had a little mishap with the wipers, the blooming arm came off the back of the motor, I hadn't bolted the 10 milli on properly, I've done it anyway. What I want to do is get the wipers going properly, so I've cleaned the screen, I'll show you that. So I've, I've, I've razor bladed the screen and just give it a clean up. This blade here is knackered, so I don't want to operate the wipers with that on. I've always been operating them with the arms lifted so far. I'm going to pinch some blades from stores if I can find any. If not, I'll nick them off Tina G for now. We'll see. But we need new tube. So I've been to local motor factors and I've got some new tube. So what I'm going to do, get a pan on the go with boiling water to soften these tubes up. Because I don't want to risk breaking that T-piece. That T-piece has actually got a one-way ball valve in it, would you believe? Stops the water running back out of the jets, so that as soon as you hit your foot on the washer squeezy, the water's in the pipes and it's not run back into the bottle. So that little T-piece has a little, it's a one-way valve in there. So if you're ever replacing them, you've got to get one with the valve in it. Don't just get a straight T-piece, otherwise your wiper jets will drain back and then takes a few squirts to get the water through. With this valve, it's instant. So we need to change that. Oh, sorry, not that, not that T-piece, this one. Sorry, correction, that's the one with a valve in it. 
there the one that goes in this t-piece is just a the one at the top under the scuttle that split, splits the load across or splits the water across the, the little ball valve is in that one okay and then we'll put the bottle in fill it with water so i'm just going to boil some water and then cut to length using this as exact copy and we'll be good to go so i'll be right back once i've done that and then the washer pump itself the switch has broke off it washer pumps down there it's foot operated but i don't know about the ball it's gone it's gone crumbled to bits so we need a, a whole new washer pump i should have one but it might take a while to find and i thought that all the rubbers on this car we've said this so many times they're all perished Any, anything to do with rubber is gone anyway let's get the tubes in at least See you in a sec, PC. This is Project Papa. Okay, we're on the wiper, foot operated wiper control. There it is, foot mounted, little rubber bulb. You'll notice if you've got an early Mark III. This type of later Mark III is slightly different design, virtually the same. And then Mark IV and V electric. Don't think facelifts went electric oh yeah i think facelifts went electric so any pre-facelift so this one is damaged the pipe the rubber outlet of it is split the switch is broken apart you can see parts of the switch there don't worry we'll catch those bits in a sec so the switch is gone the bulb might be salvageable and i'll show you what you can do with these bulbs now why is it broken away Looks like the bolts come off. It has a not a very good design really. It has a washer inside with a bolt on it and it uh, grips the rubber from the inside with a, with a washer and then you bolt it on and that's made makes it watertight. So there's that then the switch which is, does a wipe as you press. So you're basically operating a switch and you're squeezing the rubber bulb so it's a a bellows effect not electric the switch is just to operate the wiper so we need to take that off that's okay there that pipe never goes that pipe it's tough stuff so you always get that and the little joiner so that's good we'll put that into a new bulb this bulb's gone actually we won't be able to salvage it because the, the spouts ripped on it so it's had some corrosion in it, not much corrosion on the car. I would say the reason that's corroded is it's leaked on itself. So what would have happened is the heat, it just can't take it, the hot climate, that will break down there, start to leak. So I bet you the owner had problems with this. We, we can ask him because we're in touch with the owner. So I bet you that leaked onto the switch, corroded the rivets of the switch, the switch then broke apart, then the rest of the water ran down and it probably half worked for a while and probably leaked for ages and half worked and then it's rotted itself because no water comes down that area even when the cars rot unless they were really bad no water comes down there so that's that what also it had done is it had corroded the screws here they are is one of the screws there's two holding it on the tough screws these and they were well corroded in now in the past I've struggled to get these out. But I learned a technique today that will help you if you're trying to do it. If you've if you've encountered in this, if you're encountering this situation, or uh, you're just interested, I'll show you a little way. And um, it, you need one of these tools though to do it. And it's not a drill. It's just impact. So don't think it's a drill because it isn't. It's got a hammering effect on it which shocks things loose. It's designed to torque bolts up and to undo bolts. I've uh, been using it a lot on the series, as you know. Straighten you up there. First, what you've got to do is find the exact, and I mean exact, end fitting Phillips posi drive, whatever one you want to call it. I think it's posi drive in this case. It has to fit into that screw, so it feels like the screw is actually just so happy to be mated up like Romeo and Juliet together they go and once you get the bit 
that uh, is the correct size for this then you can uh, put an extension on the arm on the drill on the driver see how that is correct because it holds it up that was wrong it just be falling off so that wants to be there and you can feel it lock in really tight because you've only got one chance to do this and then if you get this wrong it isn't easy to get to these screws because the bracket itself is in the way the pedals are in the way the, the transmission tunnels in the way and you, you're in a whole world of trouble trying to get them screws out even if you croc sanded the heads off them you're still into the problem of trying to get the threaded bit out of that bracket the brackets welded to the car so you've not got many places to go you're into drilling and retapping with larger screws that's the only option i would say after that you'd probably have to file the heads off the screws and then drill through but by using this and some uh, penetrating spray wherever you ever you want to use I'd probably use something like uh, fur tan or plus gas. Plus gas is pretty good as well. Then push as hard as you can. Really push as hard as you can. So you've got maximum force pushing on the screw and then it'll hammer. It won't turn it straight away. It'll 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 give you the ba 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 ba. And if you keep hammering away, each impact will break that screw down. If you're finding you're still struggling if you can move your sound deadening out of the way you could always heat the head of the screw up but that's a bit dangerous but i had this on standby i was going to do that this is a pinpoint operation lamp you can see that obviously there's going to be some flare from it and it's going to catch around so if you're doing that probably wet towels is a good one soaking wet towels or something to protect the surrounding um, matting uh, if you had your carpet in it's a definitely a no-go it's only because I've got uh, pretty much all the stuff stripped. So there's a couple of tips there, but that worked for me, and they were pretty rusted in. Yes, you could strip it, and then you're gone, but you've nothing to lose. It, luckily, the screw is actually made of a very tough material. It's not like your normal screw. This actually managed to shred one of the bits. Well, some of these bits probably not that good anyway, but it managed to rip that one and snap the tooth off it. I went for another one, got it in the end. So that just saves us a hell of a lot of time. So we're out of the woods there. Now let's pick up those little springs and repair the switch. Then I think I've got a rubber, um, what would you call that, a bellows. And we're gonna have to. Right, let's have a look at what we've got and how we're gonna fix it. So our original bulb with the, the washer the ceiling washer inside it broke away and then cracking on the edges of it but I thought there was a crack in this part I can't see it now it's a bit tacky round it's uh, grubby round the end of it but actually that probably go again however I got a newer one this one looks like nice no low mileage I'm actually not so sure this is actually one I've got new old stock it's just never been fitted to a unit certainly got no cracking on that so that's the one to use if you're going to do it they're always handy to I have a, I always buy these when I see them right there's the switch I've put that back together the bits had all fallen out so there it is it doesn't need any work it's it's just good to go as it is yeah, the rivets have corroded off the heads so this little Bakelite plate goes on We'll have to glue that on because that's gone so that shouldn't stop us being in the game so that oh there's a plunger as well there's a plunger we need to fit the plunger to it so that goes in the middle of the pin of the spring goes in i'll actually i'll put a little bit of grease in this i will put a bit of grease in it let's get you centralized sorry about that i'll put a bit of grease in there so let's say we've fixed that. That goes on a little bracket, metal bracket, two little grubby screws there. Or just short screws. And here's what I've made for the replacement plate. A bolt through a washer and then soldered round using the heat, uh, my little blow lamp to get that. And it, it, I let it flow round. So it has gone all the way round very nicely. So that will then push and sit 
inside this. I think I'll put a little bit of RV on the face, bring it in, it, although it should just seal exactly as it is. But I will put some RV on there. We're raining again, by the way. I'm now working in the rain. And then I've got a better casing here, slightly better casing. I must have pinched the bulb off this at some point. You can see where I took off a, a previous uh, part. But that's a good good setup. So that, that and that will all go together with the switch repaired and a little bit of grease in the switch. And that should get us back in the game. So I'll RV this. That's, um, I don't even know what RV stands for. No idea. RV silicon. Mm, it must be a must be an acronym for something. Abbreviation, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, and then that would go through this. I wish it'd stop raining. That's all it does. It's rain all the time. That's the the right fit for there. Obviously, the bolt's a bit long, so it'll be crocked down to suit. Crocky sander. It's just a little bit long. But better longer than short I, I can't see why that won't make a good seal once that compresses that it's probably stronger than the aluminium washer that was in there so I'm pretty confident it'll seal we'll soon be able to test it by just simply putting the vacuum uh, gauge on there and drawing some vac off and just seeing if it holds the vac and that's it if it holds the vac you're good to go uh, you can, um, hold the pressure sorry I'll be ballooning it both actually, I've got a pressure and a vac gun, Sykes Pick Advance one, so we'll just attach it to that squeeze, or you can blow and you can put your tongue on the end, um, that's another technique, whatever you want. Anyway, washer pump will soon be repaired, I'm confident that this will soon be done and working. You just give me, just give me half an hour and I'll be back with a finished article. I think you can see what I'm trying to do, so I'm not going to miss anything out by jumping it now, if you're doing this at home. You, you can see what we're up to that's the that's the key because that's what goes it, it that is aluminium i know this is steel and it's going to rust eventually i accept that but not in my lifetime hasta la vista baby mac get to the chopper here's another top mark free cortina tip for all you cortina owners that have probably had this or got this had this issue in the past and that blocked Wiper nozzles, you know we're on the wipers at the moment. Uh, compressed air in a little tube. And, would you believe, a zip wheel. So these strands are about the toughest thing you can sh poke in there. That and then wire ties that you get on like electrical stuff when you buy it, when you unbox it. They also work. But uh, for us, poke the zip wheel, a strand of the zip wheel through the little, there's two little eyes on these, the twin nozzled. So it's just a crimped copper twin nozzle affair. So you get two jets. One hits the middle of the screen and it should, or just under, maybe a third in. The other one two thirds up the screen. And I like them exactly lined up. Another OCD thing, OCD thing for you at the city. Yes, yeah, so I just do that. And both, both these, well, all four eyes were blocked. We've now got them unblocked by just poking that through. We've got now, you can't see, but I can feel two nice jets of air coming off the airline, uh, just off my airline there. Can you see it? it that, luckily, the air lance has a slight leak, so it's handy. If you put too much power on it, it'll blow the pipe off, blow the tube off. This is not high pressure rated. It, if you blocked it, it'd actually balloon. If you, if you cable tied it or uh, Jubilee clip this on and then hit full pressure and this was blocked, you probably blow the pipe but anyway there's another way you can test them as well stick them in some water to see the twin jets coming out you'll see the air bubbles but that's not necessary that's good and this one's okay that one's done they were both completely blocked one of them was actually slightly crimped as though its end had been crushed and i was struggling to get the, the zip wheel through it and i thought there was something met, metal jammed inside it I tried all sorts and eventually I decided to just reverse crimp it like this. I just squeezed it a little bit and that enlarged the eye and then it was clear. So that one was a bit damaged at the end. I don't know how that's happened in its life. But both those now go. Blocking one, blocking the other. 
So we're done there, that's a little tip for you. We're gonna fit these back to the car, all the tubes in. I'll be right back, the compressor's kicked in. See you in a sec. Right, let's take the nozzles to the car. I'll need this Phillips to screw them back on. I'll show you the repaired pump bulb. Do you know what? I didn't remember which one which went on which side. They are handed. One's a tighter curve than the other. I did lightly scratch one. That one's left hand side. I think. Or did I? We'll have to check. They're handed anyway. They've got to go on. There's the tube. New tube from the uh, local factors. And then our magical bulb. Repaired. Ready to go on some new screws here. We won't be using those old screws. So there it all is assembled. And that should be working. Everything's in and ready to go. I uh, put a little bit of extra RV at the base of it as well, just to help it in case it ever failed. This probably never would if it goes, it that probably won't help, but I just I just put a bead around the bottom. But it wasn't leaking. I've tested the the, um, the suction. Let's compress it and stick your tongue on the end. Let go and it should suck on your tongue and not come off, which it did. Then I did a, a light test on the hand pump and that worked as well. So all round, it looks like that's ready to rock. So we may as well just screw that up now and then uh, fit the jets in a sec. one in and then the second one just there same procedure handy little tool okay fit I borrowed some blades off Tina of Tina G and we're ready for the big test hell yeah they sound smooth we are twin speed Thank you very much. Do we park? Yes, we do. And then one foot operation for your wash wipe with no water in it yet. And we're not connected up on the hose, but we will do that next. But touch on there. So that's good. All we've got to do is put some water in. And then we can move on to yet another job. But it's slowly, slowly coming back to life. A mirror as well has been replaced. It actually had the, the L mirror. It's now got the... XL mirror, but I think you could order this even if you had an L car as an option. It's the dipping mirror. It had the fixed one which just crumbled away in my hand. I've kept it. I don't know where it is now, but that's just a non, it's a slightly narrow mirror. This is a slight upgrade. <clears throat> Funnily enough, this one, this wing guard, it's actually, I think it's actually a little bit wider than the standard Cortina. I think it might be Mark II Escort. I don't know, but it's nice, it fits the car, it's, it looks fine. Uh, I'd rather the slightly wider as an upgrade. I think that's a good thing to do. Because if you think about your upgrades versus your originality, some things are worth, if they're still in the period keeping, which that is, they're worth adding on because that's a great improvement in visibility. You get it slightly wider. And visibility is one of the best things you can uh, do to improve a vehicle. LED light, tail lights, you know, decent wipers set up good wiper blades, things like that, and uh, well, whilst it might not have had the L, might not have had the dip, it's a safety feature which is a good upgrade, and it was available on Mark 3's, GT's and GXL's I think came with that as a standard, so yeah, and I'm sure you could order a dip in mirror, um, I think it's in the Ford accessories book, so you can't get me on that one, so yeah, i just like to see this uh, bulb work, it is a bit of a a hit and miss it might not work what I've done it is waterproof the jets are clear because what you did what you don't want to do as well is set it all up and then forget that your jets are blocked hit that and um, burst it it shouldn't happen but seeing that we've just repaired it we don't want to be bursting it it's been a few hours for the RV as well I really should maybe leave it a little bit longer for the for the RV to cure but I really don't think it's an, an issue on this because the washer that we built it's not relying on the rv the rv was kind of the silicon was a sort of extra thing i don't think it'll really need that uh, 
to be fully cured but really strictly speaking it should you know a bit naughty in it choke cable of course uh, choke lever of course they're working good handbrake remember we on the city so oil pressure warning lamp works alternator works alternator light goes off so that's good with no lights at all we need to be working on them soon they're all non-working heater of course you remembered bump and you're good to go twin speed we're missing some knobs off there I found one knob this other knobs missing it uh, I don't think it was in the car but anyway they're easy to get I've got plenty of those that's the pull for your boost like we explained earlier on in the clip so yeah pleased with those wipers really am let's see if we can wash wipe I filled up the water the bottle is on it's working I'll show you boom back in the net powerhouse it's nice that. but this one that second nozzle remember I was telling you I tried to fix it doesn't want to play still blocking up so not something right not something not quite right with that that jet it's only on single where this one's on swing anyway we can always get a nozzle that's something to work on it's MOTable this because remember that's what I'm trying to do with no horn either that needs repairing that's bust I think the stalk's gone for the horn because that pushes on a contact that's gone I think it actually pulls on a cable actually pushes on a cable inside here and there's a switch I don't know but something's not right with that can't feel the action of the horn I'll double check I'll check it's given 12 but that's a uh, jobs for when it's in the workshop the main thing I wanted to do was be able to see where I'm going know my wipers were working and um, you know just box that job so I know what parts I need I don't need to be looking for one of them it's not leaking inside here bone dry there so I don't need to be looking out for one of those because obviously that will fail the MOT so that's got to be right um, these sun visors are sea solid oh it's gone I've been soaking it but it's just turned to dust listen to it there's nothing there I mean, that's probably really know how you could fix that it's just bag just a baggy it's gone crunch I don't know how you could fix that I have got a, a visor if I could extract the post I could do it that way hard to find these very hard to find yeah that's unseized anyway because that was seized the other day so at least it's moving but not much use like that I think we're gonna have to spray in there spray liberally in there and get it working then remove it that way and slot a new one on that cap needs pushing up these caps just clip in these posts are designed so when you headbutt them when you crash and roll your car the the, the eject and break away so they don't stab you a hole in, hole in your face that's what they're for yeah, this was like one of the first safety cars with crumple zones and switches that break away so they don't stab you. That's why these just snap off if you punch them. So when you're rolling around in the cabin getting chucked all over the place, you uh, the idea is you're not making um, serious uh, injuries to yourself. Yeah, see you in a sec. <laughs> 